In this video, we're going to walk through an example of how to put together a cash budget for a firm. So first, it's important to understand that before you put together the cash budget, you need to have all the other budgets. Uh, they have to be prepared first. So when we think about like the sales budget, the production budget, all these other budgets have to be put together in order to be able to even make the cash budget. Right? So we need to know about our direct material expenditures that we're planning uh, before we would be able to put together the cash budget. Uh, so then in addition to that, it's just really important to note how important it is to have a cash budget for a firm uh, because you might have the best idea in the world, but if you run out of cash, you are not going to have a business. So you might say, well, hey, if you have a great business, why would you ever run out of cash? Well, there might be something like, for example, things like seasonality of your business, right? You might run a ski resort, and it might be an incredible ski resort, but you don't plan on the fact that, oh, wait, in the summer months, uh, we're just not going to have any cash coming in. You have to go and plan. You have to budget for that uh, so that you have the cash when you need it. So let's walk through an example, and actually I've chosen an example that would have to do uh, with seasonality. And we'll think about our example we've used in the previous budget uh, videos. We'll talk about a firm that, that makes bicycles. Right now, you might imagine that a firm that might, uh, makes bicycles might sell more bicycles in the summer months than it would in the winter time when, when there's snow on the ground. So we've got this, this kind of seasonality issue, and we can look at that when we think about uh, how our cash is going to flow throughout the firm du during the year. So now when we, we start out with, when we do our cash uh, budget, the first thing is we start, well, what is our beginning balance? And, and for the moment, let's just focus on quarter one. I've written out all the quarters and then for the year, uh, because we're going to do it on a quarterly basis, and I've written it out uh, so that you didn't, we just, this video wasn't an hour long with me writing all these things out. But if you just focus on this column right here, and then, and then we'll get to the other columns later. So the first quarter, we're starting out with, with our cash balance of $2,500, right? So at the beginning of this year, we look at the bank account and we say we've got 2500 2500 bucks. But then we need to add in our cash receipts. When we're talking about cash receipts, uh, we're talking about cash we collect from customers. Right, so for the, for the most part, uh, when we think about cash we're receiving, it's, it's just money uh, from customers. We could make this maybe more complicated and start thinking we have income from other sources. Maybe we own a little bit of real estate and we get some rental revenue. But we're not thinking about that. This is just a really simple example. When people buy bicycles or comp uh, other businesses buy bicycles from us, uh, those are our customers, and then we're going to receive cash from that. Now, this is where it comes into play that we already need to know have done our other budgets. For example, our sales budget, right? Because our sales budget, we're going to know the number of bicycles we plan to sell and the price we plan to sell them at, and that's where we're going to get this 15 grand from, right? In quarter one, we went to our sales budget and said, okay, how much are we going to receive from our customers? How many bicycles are we going to sell at? What price? And so forth. So we use that information from that budget to input this $15,000. So that doesn't just come out of thin air, it comes from another budget. Now, once we know that, we can actually put together the cash available, right? And cash available, this is really simple. If you think about it, uh, this isn't really that complex. We're just saying we started with 2,500 bucks in the bank, and we're planning on generating 15,000 in cash from the bicycles that we're going to sell in quarter one. So, cash on hand, cash available, however you want to think about it, we're going to have $17,500 cash in quarter one. Now, you might be saying, well, hey, we're going to spend money to get direct materials to make those bicycles and so well that's what's coming next now we think about our disperse uh, disbursements now with our disbursements again we've got this issue uh, and here's our disbursements i've kind of got a little little heading there and and all these here are our disbursements so when we think about this all these are going to come from those other budgets that's what we talked about that you make the cash budget last because we got to look at the direct material budget and say, hey, we've budgeted $3,000 in expenditures for quarter one on direct materials. We've budgeted $4,000 in expenditures for the, from the direct labor budget. The overhead budget says $2,000 for quarter one, and then the SGNA budget says $10,000. So we pull all these numbers from other budgets. And so when we think about all those disbursements, we can just lump them together and say we've got 19,000 in disbursements, 
And so we can compare that now, compare our disbursements, this 19,000, right, which is the sum of all these right here, and then compare that against the cash we had available, right? So we say we had 17,500 in cash available, but we're spending 19,000. Hey, the disbursements are more than the cash available. Well, what does that mean? That means that we're going to have a shortage of cash or a deficiency of cash, right? And I've got this here. We've got this line item, excess or shortage, and I've got shortage in parentheses. And the reason for that is that that means that if this number here is in parentheses, it's negative, right? Instead of putting a negative sign, we just put it in parentheses. That's the custom. So we just said cash available minus disbursements is going to be negative 1,500 or 1,500 in parentheses. That means that we are going to be 1,500 short this quarter. Well, does that mean that we go out of business and we go bankrupt in quarter one? Well, not necessarily, uh, because we can go and we can borrow money. Uh, to Well, we would <laughs> we hope we can borrow money in order to keep the business going. So that's going to lead to our next section, which is actually called the financing section. And I and I left out the the financing title in here because I want to be able to fit all of this onto uh, one screen here so that you can read it. Uh, I know there's a lot going on. Just bear with me. So the borrowing section is going to be uh, maybe we have a line of credit with the bank, right? Some firms have a thing where they say, okay, if we ever fall where we have a shortage of cash in this quarter, we just gener automatically the bank generates a $100,000 line of credit at X percent interest rate. But we're going to say we're going to make this really simple so that we don't even have to think about interest uh, in our problem. We're going to say that you borrow the money from a family member. So you go to one of your parents and you say, hey, I got this great business. But in the first quarter, we've got a shortage of cash. And, and, and in the, the summer months, when we sell more bicycles, everything's going to be all right. But just right now, I need a little money. And they say, how much do you need? And you say, you could say, well, I just need 1500 uh, to cover the shortage. But then you'd have zero. So you're kind of playing fast and loose with how much cash you have. But you might say, you know, as a general rule, I like to have at least $2,000 in the bank at, at any given time just in case there's an emergency or something I didn't plan for. So you say I want an ending balance of 2000 To get that ending balance, given you have a shortage of 1500 what do you need in terms of borrowings to cover the 1500 and to cover this 2000 you want to end with? Well, that's going to be 3500 right? Because if you took 3500 and you subtracted out this shortage of 1500 then that's going to give you two grand, right? So then you're left with two thousand dollars. And repayments, if you see these two right here, we're talking about repayments. We're not gonna, we're not repaying this in this quarter. We'll repay it in some point in the future when we generate some more money. And again, we don't have to worry about interest at all because it comes from a family member who is so generous, they're not gonna charge us interest on the loan. And so our final, and, and again, I've, I've, we've, I hope you can see all this in the screen and that some of it's not being cut out. But we started with fifteen or twenty-five hundred dollars in cash at the beginning of this quarter, and now we're ending the quarter with two thousand, thanks to this this loan, this borrowing uh, from one of our family members that helped us deal with this shortage of cash. Now, now we can start thinking about, and I'll just scroll up so you can see the quarters again. That was all for quarter one, and then quarter two. I'm going to walk through a little more quickly because we just went through it. Uh, we scroll down, so now we're going to start with. $2,000. And you might say, where'd you get that $2,000 from? Well, we got it because the beginning balance of quarter two is the ending balance of quarter one, right? So we start with that 2000 and then we say, okay, now we're receiving 90000 Where did we get that 90000 from customers? Came from our sales budget, right? Now that means cash available in 92 grand. And then now we've got our disbursements. Those come from our other budgets, our direct material budget, our SG&A budget, and so forth. Disbursements total up to 46,000. We take the cash available of 92,000, subtract the disbursements of 46,000, and that leaves us with another 46,000. But this time it's an excess. That means that we have more cash. After we've said, okay, how much cash did we have and how much did we spend? We have 46000 left over. Now, we don't need to borrow anything this time because we have an excess of cash. We have extra cash. And so we're going to do a repayment, right? We're going to do repayment. And so this is 3500 to repay that loan to the family member. 
And I've got the 3,500 in parentheses because we're saying this is negative. This is, this is, I've just, it's just a little convention here. So we know that uh, this 3,500 from the borrowing has been zeroed out. And so we're saying that ultimately, even though we have an excess of cash of 46,000, we're subtracting the 3,500. We repaid a loan, and so now our ending balance is 42,5, which is 46,000 minus the $3,500 repayment. Now, in, in quarters three and four, it's a little simpler because we, we don't have any borrowings or repayments or anything going on. And you notice, uh, so, so I'm not gonna walk through all of quarter three and quarter four because they're fairly straightforward. You should be able to figure it out at this point. Now, when you look at it, we say, hey, we're really generating a lot of cash in these summer months, right? Because we're collecting a lot more from customers, right? Quarter two and quarter three, we're, we're, we're generating 90,000 and 60,000 in cash receipts from customers, uh, respectively, whereas in quarter one, we only generate 15,000, right? Because there's not a lot of people buying bicycles in January. They're buying them in June and, and so forth. So we've got the seasonality issue where we had problems in quarter one with cash, but we were able to budget. We were able to plan and show our family member and say, hey, look, we're going to generate a lot of cash in the summer, right? Well, we're going to sell a lot of bicycles. We just need you to float us this money right now so we can deal with the temporary shortage. But if we didn't have a budget, if we didn't have a plan, then we would have all kinds of issues uh, because we, we don't really have a plan of how we're going to have the cash to finance and fund our business uh, throughout the year. And then when we, we look at our final column, we've got our year year total. And it basically, a lot of this is just summaries of things throughout the year. Here's the summaries of our disbursements and so forth. But when we look, of course, at the beginning balance, it's the beginning balance of quarter one, uh, not not the total of all these for, for reasons we talked about in our previous videos. And, and ultimately, at the end of the year, uh, we're going to be left with $73,500, which is also the ending balance, of course, uh, for quarter four.